Good news! We're nearly halfway to the gold we need to create the Empire of Albion. Bad news. Someone is trying to kill King Zack. Again. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really don't know. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Crusader Kings 3 in our Empire of Albion series. So it did occur to me, I was checking something right before we started the episode. I can imprison Duke Lewis and he would actually go along with it because his opinion of me has improved so much that he can't really fight back against this imprisonment chance. He has much lower intrigue than me. He did attempt murder in the past, so we could imprison him without being viewed as a tyrant. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just on the off chance that he is one of the problems. Um, we also have Ban Mormare Martha, who's a fornicator. Looks like we're awaiting a response from another matter. Alright, so he's been imprisoned. Let's go ahead and imprison her as well, because same thing. I'm really doing this just to remove the likelihood that this scheme chance... It looks like the scheme's success chance is particularly low, uh, which is good. So someone's trying to kill me, but like, we don't have to worry too much about the scheme being uh, too big of a threat. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to keep an eye on this. The face of Jesus... Yet another day of leading my kingdom brings little surprises, save for my Archbishop Bozen bursting into my throne room, eagerly waving a bag of desserts into my face. My king! Oh, here we go again. <laughs> my king, my king! Oh, it's a miracle. I was inspecting the cook's meal for you this evening when it occurred to me just how much these particular items resemble the face of none other than Jesus. Upon inspection, I must admit the resemblance is uncanny, but this surely must be heresy. So, um, we now have... <laughs> Archbishop, you know what? This is kind of adorable. Like, also, he kind of looks like Wilfred Mott right now, and so, like, I just immediately like him even more. So, um, we have gained, once again, the delicious face of Jesus artifact. You spend 50 piety, Bozen becomes your friend, and he gains the trait loyal. <laughs> okay, so we can revoke some titles from these characters. Let's see. Interestingly enough, if I were to revoke, I could revoke the Marmadam of Bukan, and that would actually be connected to some of the other territory that I hold. You can see in blue, these are the current holdings that I have. So I could just take that from her. I would gain some stress, and we would lose control in this area, but we'd have direct control over this. Let's do that. Just so. Alright, so now, yeah, she's not going to be happy about that. We have the option to torture her as well. I don't know that that's necessary. So we could release her on terms that she would renounce her claims. She would not be happy about this. We'll deal with that in a minute. Let's look at other possibilities. Also, do I have other characters that I could ransom? Maybe. I kind of doubt it, but... Oh, I do! What the heck? How is this not a... Game, why are you not showing me this? I can ransom this character for a hundred gold. Yes. Ransom them. I can ransom this character for a hundred... Oh my god! I should have checked this tab a while ago. Alright, let's ransom him too. But Duke Gluis, however... Where are you? You, sir. <laughs> Could we ransom him for a hundred gold? <laughs> he can't afford the full price. Um... We can't revoke a title from him. He has a feudal contract with protected title revocation. Interesting. Alright, so here's how this is going to work. Duke Lewis. We're going to negotiate... Ooh, he's not going to accept it. He knows what I'm going to do. He absolutely knows what I'm going to do with that. 
That's very interesting indeed. So I guess we'll just keep him in jail then for now, just to reduce the likelihood that he'll contribute to this murder plot. I'm not too worried. All right, so that's 200 gold right there. That's the amount of gold we made last episode in five minutes. How about that? And our income is continuing to increase. We do have direct control once again over this territory here. Banff. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so there's some building that I can do. And believe me, I want to, but we need to save gold for one purpose and one purpose alone. Child benefits from spouse's tutelage. My daughter Plaisance is more likely to receive a good education due to Queen Yarmila's tutelage. Nice. A strange noise. I arrived back at my castle after a long, lonely walk. Another year passed, another year older. I was born this day 51 years ago. The older I get, the more I cherish the relationships I've cultivated over the years. So it saddens me that I've not heard from my wife, Yarmila, or any of my friends today. I trudge along to my chambers, loneliness impeding my lazy feet, when I hear a clang and hushed whispers from down the hallway. What could that be at this hour? Aww. <laughs> this is kind of nice. <laughs> Like, this is genuinely kind of nice. After all the crap that King Zack has been through, they're throwing him a freaking surprise birthday party for, 50, for his 51st birthday. Holy crap. What a surprise. All my nearest and dearest friends have come together to wish me as well, to wish me well as I begin this next year of life. There is even an entire table laden with saffron cakes, my favorite. Here I was thinking that everyone had forgotten about me. I cannot believe that Yarmila went to all the trouble of arranging this in secret. I had not a clue such a thoughtful surprise was being planned at all. My friend Bozen approaches me, struggling to carry three beautifully wrapped packages. Ever the trickster, he says, I have three gifts here for the choosing. One shall be yours, but which shall it be? We gain 30 opinion of every friend. I'll take the biggest one. You receive the large gift. You become the owner of Lavender Jade Pendant. So that's extra piety and monthly pi piety from buildings. Extra 6%. Not bad. Um... I don't know that I really want to wear that right now, but I'll keep an eye on it. I don't have anything else that I can wear at the moment. I, I need to hire an antiquarian, to be honest. All right, the modest gemstone we're not using. Presto Fini we're not using. Harefoot we're not using. There's some good stuff here. I wish it was... Okay, interesting. So you can destroy artifacts for gold. You can. Okay, hold on. Stop everything. <laughs> Last episode, I was like, I wonder if there's ways you can, like, sell artifacts and you can, in fact, destroy them. So I probably got a comment on the last one, I would guess, from someone already telling me about this. But I just recorded that one a few moments ago. And hopefully no art audio artifacts in this one. Different kind of artifact. Hopefully no, you know, audio shenanigans. There were some in the last episode. Might have to re-record it. Or not re-record, but... Um, Redub it. Anyway. Harefoot. Let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and destroy that. Press Delphinium. I mean, I'm pretty sure I already have things that I need for fertility bonuses. Yeah, I can get rid of the Press Delphinium. That's 40 gold right there. Oh my god, that's fantastic. Donald's Milk Tooth. Wait, can I destroy that for 40 gold? Donald's Milk Tooth? You know what? Yes, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Why? It's Donald's Milk Tooth. Yes, that is like our one remaining legacy of Donald, but he is contributing to the formation of the Empire as soon as possible. Like, why would we not do that? <laughs> we have two of the delicious face of Jesus. 40 gold for every artifact you destroy. I didn't know this. What the heck? Okay. Okay. I wish I would have known this a little sooner. But it is what it is. I'm just glad that I know it now because we have 861 gold. And on top of that... All right, so we've got King Constantine's uh, crown equipped right now. That's interesting. The Anglo-Saxon crown is a better crown. I'll gain 80 gold for this if we destroy the Anglo-Saxon crown. Yeah. 
destroy it. <laughs> Let's just wear King Constantine's crown. Oh my god, this is this is so freaking great. I had no clue. I think I might have taken off one of the items that I wanted to wear. That was the ancient scarab brooch. Yep. Let's go ahead and wear that. Okay. Holy crap. Now, the stag antler is pretty nice. I'm looking at some of these going, okay, well... Destroy... There it is. There it is. <laughs> yes! I had no idea. I feel like such a fool, but I figured it out. I figured it out. That's what happens. Empire Britannia. Here we go. All right, so... I don't think we can rename it just yet. If we create the title, we can rename it after we make it. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's happening. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna click the button. You'll gain 500 prestige. How close are we, by the way, to... Okay, this isn't gonna get us to the living legend, but it's gonna get us closer. Create title. Do it. Rank gained. You are now a mighty emperor. Okay, so... With that, for now, let's go ahead for the adjective. We can go with Albionic, just to sort of keep the Britannic like vibe a little bit and then this is the th this is the actual color now the question is it looks like we can keep the gold the scottish gold and i love that idea Oh my god, I'm so happy right now. Holy crap. Alright, so we can do our own coat of arms, but I'm gonna, I'll, I'll keep that one. That's fine. Alright, so we can't undo it. So it's Albion and Albionic. Submit. Oh! Yes! Okay, so it's a little bit brighter than it was before, but I'll take it, you know, because it has, it's almost more of a, like, true golden sheen. Like, it's it's just gleaming more brightly, you know? Oh my god. Alright, so, with that, we can declare war. Wait, interestingly enough, hold on. Yeah, no, the, we have a du jour claim over everyone now. So, with that, everything has changed. Oh my god, I'm so freaking happy. Okay, I did not know that you could do that with artifacts. But now that we have, so, let's review. It's been a few episodes, we've been trying to hold, look at his, look at the crown. Look at the crown. Look at it. Look at it. Look at that crown. It's fantastic, I can't rotate him right now, but, um, yeah. It's just... This is, this is lovely. Dude, you look awesome. You were born for it. You are born for it. Discard. Okay. So just to review the situation that we're in right now. With the formation of this particular title, we are no longer splitting the domain every single time that we have a succession from one king, or one, in this case, now emperor, to the next. The reason that's been happening is that when you have multiple titles of the same level, so you have multiple kingdoms, you have multiple, um, what have we had? We had Ireland, we have Scotland, we have uh, we had Wales at one point, we had England, um, certainly England, Scotland, and Ireland. And so since all three of those titles are of the same level, they can't be given under current succession law. They can't just be given to one person. There are ways to unlock a system like that later on, but it just makes things more complicated. But now there is one title 
over all the land. One. And it is Albion. And with that, we will be able to declare war a little bit more straightforwardly than we have in the past. What's interesting, though, is that I'm not seeing that I have the Jure claims here. Maybe I need to unlock the ability to declare those wars. That's fine. Or maybe I can just vassalize him directly. We could offer vassalage. So we might be able to improve his opinion of me. We may be able to vassalize whales. Let's see this. All right. Neither of them like me very much right now. But if we change that, we might be able to just get him directly into our territory. Plush and exotic carpet. A plush carpet, vibrant and soft, arrives as a gift from Prince Edric. Why would he send me such an exquisite gift? I do not know. Or why he would. But the fine weave of the carpet is as pleasing to the touch as the skin of a lover. The carpet will cover the floors in my rooms. I think I better get rid of it. So we gain 80 more gold. And we get extra vigilant for 10 years. Um, I'm going to get rid of it. You know, this is him trying to create a super soft carpet so he can sneak around. Um, let's not do that. This is going to be 80 gold. And we're going to be extra vigilant for 10 years. Because remember, he doesn't like me. And now he wants the empire for himself. <laughs> he's not going to get it. Okay, so we have some wars that we are involved in, and now I can actually participate in these, believe it or not. Um, it does seem like this war is going particularly well. Barcelona clash against the Sultanate of Castala. By the way, speaking of larger clashes that are happening, look at what the Byzantine Empire is up to. Look at this. Look at this. They've regained a lot of territory up here. They're encroaching on Venice. They haven't done anything in southern Italy, but they also haven't lost anything in southern Italy. So um, also it seems like they've maybe gained territory because I don't think that particular island starts as Byzantine, or maybe it does. Anyway. Albion. Oh man, that feels so good. It feels so good. Holy crap. Okay. Okay. We can change this vassal's contract. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I could. I'm not this vassal's rightful leech. Really? Really? You're still going to tell me that? You can usurp the Kingdom of Wales. I probably do need to do that at this point. Um, it requires 500 gold. But we could become Kingdom of Wales, and then we would probably be the rightful leader of more of these characters. Titles can be created. There are several duchies that can be created. A couple of accolades lack successors. I know. You can demand payments. Okay, I'm not going to demand any payments right now. I really need to lower my stress levels. It would be nice if I could use the gold that I'm going to have at my disposal soon to actually, you know, host my own hunts and maybe have successful hunts. A poetic friendship. Zachariah, my dear friend, I was once again reminded of your victory against Budli, or Buthli, so I decided to write a poem about your triumph, Boson says, declaring his er, clearing his throat. The Spear's Song, a work of poetry dedicated to Emperor Zachariah's victory over the historical Buthli, written by Zachariah's good friend, Boson. When red-plumed war comes to his lands, it'll ne'er find a keener set of hands. Okay, off to a rocky start. So let none challenge his bold intent, unless to the hereafter they wish to be sent. We could say, I'll send a copy to everyone Boothley knows. You gain 350 prestige. You gain the artifact, which is a decent prestige and renown boost per month. The renown boost is especially nice. So it looks like Bozen's become a poet. And you've become my best friend. You'd gain 30 opinion. We'd lose 80 gold, though. I mean, at this point, it's fine. So this will gain a grandeur modifier if it becomes a court artifact. I kind of like the idea of gaining more prestige as a way to push towards the living legend. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's do this. I'll send a copy to everyone he knows. Let's troll him. God knows how long ago that particular victory was. Feels so good. Ah. 
Eugenia is a trained healer. A better trained healer than the one I already have? I doubt it, but we'll find out. The gift of generosity. My daughter Elizabeth has been impressed with one of the household knights for a very long time. After finally meeting him in person, she has been repeating the warrior's words to herself. Give others their due and you'll receive your own in turn. So generous or diligent and patient. Let's let her say generous because mainly we don't need to be stressed out right now. We just don't sell trivial titles. Oh, I forgot about this. So I have this option as a way, oh wow, 335 gold. If you have the at any cost perk, yeah, I just unlocked this not long ago. You gain 335 gold, selling titles yields unpredictable results. These are trivial titles. They wouldn't actually be titles that we hold, like, as far as land or kingdoms or anything like that. That's ridiculous to even think about. We could also extort subject, but that wouldn't go well. But 335 gold would go well. Let's go ahead and do that. So we basically converted some prestige to gold there. Now, what I would like to do, let's start with Lothian. I have so many things that I need to build um, that I frankly needed to build for a while. I've done no building for the entire series. Um, a trade port would be amazing in Lothian. So we're going to go ahead and get that underway. And then let's see. Dundee. We can upgrade the trade port here. I think what I'd rather do... Interesting. Oh wow, that's quite a tax increase if we upgrade the blacksmiths. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, so we've got that upgrade underway and we can finally, now that we have that title, we can start focusing on building, which will improve our income over time. It is not greater honors I seek, my liege, but if you are in need of gold, I believe we can come to some arrangement. I need the money for the good of the realm. So the sheriff... My vassal. They'd get a weak hook on me. We could say, this is not a haggle at a peasant's market. You gain 75 prestige. We're not going to tolerate that. Nice! My soulmate, have you heard what they call you? My soulmate, Yormila, says to me while folding her hands. They call you Emperor Zachariah the Generous. Spectacular, is it not? It's on the lips of the peasant and noble alike. A cause for celebration, I think, Yarmela exclaims with a cheery tone. I can get used to this name, so we gain some more prestige. We're moving towards living legend. Wait, what's that? Son learned the Goidelic language. All right. Now, we can do a grand tour. We don't quite have the money to do that yet. But we will pretty soon. Okay, now... We need to start increasing the development... However we can again. I haven't done that in a while. I really don't think I've done it since the start of the series. But we need to kind of take our foot off of the gas in terms of collecting as much money as possible. That extra 11% is nice, but at the end of the day, I'd rather increase development as much as I can. All right, so a grand tournament is available. We need to build up more money before I do any tours because I want to have a... Nice. All right, so that war ended. We're not involved in any conflicts right now. I would like to go on a tour. Oh, nice. I bring you rich gifts worthy of your majesty as a token of my goodwill and servitude. Show Earl Wolfston in at once. So that's 50 more gold right there. We gain some grandeur. We gain some renown. I've been hosting your Chancellor Duke Vane for several weeks, and he has helped me truly see the splendor of the realm under your rule. Wait, Duke Vane is actually on my good side now? What the heck? Maybe it's a different Duke Vane. I'm nothing less than honored to serve as your vassal. Now everyone's being super nice to me all of a sudden. Notice that? I noticed. I definitely noticed. Offer vassalage. Interesting. Okay. Let's start trying to woo. We can start with either Wales or Wessex. It really doesn't matter which. We could send him a gift. That would be one way. Also, we would lose stress for doing this, which is nice. So let's send some gold. So that immediately improves his opinion. 
It doesn't change the chances of him actually wanting to uh, vassalize just yet, but that's okay. We're going to start a sway scheme just to get that opinion all the way up to 100. Also, is there anyone else I can ransom? Yeah, I still have Duke Lewis and Van Marmer Martha in prison. Oh, man. Um, are you... Uh, All right, he does not, he does not want that hook. You renounce all your claims, I could release you. All right, so we could behead him. We'd gain 12 dread. It would be one of our first acts as emperor to behead the guy that tried to kill me. We'd gain stress because we're generous, but he's a known criminal. So we could execute him without being viewed as a tyrant. His primary heir is, looks like, his firstborn son. Yep. Who is 14. He's an irrational zealot. He's rowdy, fickle. Yeah, Duke Lewis is imprisoned. Do you have a ward at the moment? Uh, it's your dad. Okay. Okay. Hang on, I have an idea. <laughs> okay, all right. Let, let's let's uh, first of all, off with his head. Cool, cool, great, great. Love that. Um, offer ward. Uh, offer guardianship. Um, what if I were to take you on myself, my boy? <laughs> This is so hilarious. Okay. Um, let's go ahead. Elizabeth, we're going to remove you as a ward. Oh, we have a lot of kids. Let's have mom take over. Yarmila is your mom, right? Yes, she is. I have several kids by the first wife, who was at the birthday party, by the way. <laughs> I didn't mention that, but she's on the screen. I'm like, well, that's awkward. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, we've got several kids by the first wife. Let's see how many exactly. I think there's four. No, six. The first six. And then three more by Yarmila. So the younger, obviously. There's a 10-year gap between them. Quite a family. Okay, so... Um, prisoner executed. Yep. Yep. Offer guardianship. <laughs> Alright, so we can convert culture. He's likely to become Anglo-Saxon, because right now he's Cumbrian. So we're gonna literally... This is, a, this is more than a little bit dastardly. This is very, very evil. Um, but at the same time, it's deserved. So is it evil? No, not really. We're just writing past wrongs, and the wrongs just happen to be his dad's. Oh, man. So good. So good to finally be emperor. I can crack my knuckles and see what I can get away with here. All right, so it looks like we only have a couple of years to make an impression, but we'll see. As I lean over to pick up a scripture to study, my daughter Elizabeth barges through the door, interrupting my tranquil solitude. Father, you won't believe what I found out about Beorthelm. She pauses to catch her breath for dramatic effect. So this would improve her intrigue focus. I think I've got Beorthelm under wraps. Let's go ahead and improve her intrigue education. Okay, now what else can I do with my prisoners? <laughs> the power trip begin. Now, if we ransom you, that's 50 gold right off the bat. It would put a lunatic in charge, which would not be good. If I were to negotiate your release... Okay. Let's do that. Let's have you renounce your claims.
I'll let you out. And now we don't have that many characters left. In prison. Faction created against you. Cumbrian Asatru populists targeting you. Lines about legacy. The latest work of my acquaintance, Earl Peter, has become all the rage at Court of Late. The piece deals with memory and what we leave behind, and Peter has publicly dedicated it to me. The legacy of an emperor. Men need not fear as lives depart, provided they leave behind them art. And when their final hour nears, their name lives on, on the lips of peers. All right, you did better than Wilfred Mott. What's his name? Bozen. You did better than Bozen. Good job. But... I can say this is truly heartfelt. We gained some, you know, positive opinion of him and some piety. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna, gonna say it's truly heartfelt. The poem is lauded. You are not employing a wet nurse, really. Let's look for one. Let's also look for a caravan master because I do need one. Betrothal fulfilled. Alpen Elpen. <laughs> Now married. So the betrothed came of age. She's an evil paragon, though. That's not good. Alright, so the search for the wet nurse. Her aptitude is good. Leofwin is not. Let's go with Ethelberg. Gracious adventurer. And she's 25, so she'll be around for a while. Where did my gold go? Seriously, where, where did... Where did my gold go? I really don't know. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. I'm not worried. I'm emperor now, but at the same time, where did it go? I need to know. Caravan Master, as per my request, does it cost gold to do those searches? Is that what it is? Maybe that's what it is. All right, aptitude is good. Yeah, Sigir. Yeah, that's what it is. It's you pay them to join your court. I didn't realize that. Why is it so expensive? That's a lot of money. Now I'm 271 gold in debt. That's not a really, that's not an optimal position to be ending an episode in. Meet peers, off to play. My daughter Plaisance has been invited to a gathering of peers by Duchess Ethelthrith. Ethelthrith. She is packed and ready and clearly excited to leave for Gowrie. Have a good time. All right, so because we're in debt, there's going to be some negative events here. Greetings, my impla greetings, <laughs> greetings, greetings, my implacable liege. Please accept this humble gift. It is not much, but I hope it is of use to our continued friendship. Nice. I accept your gift. And it looks like there's a ransom payment here. So this is helping to get rid of some of the problem. We're already back down to negative ninety-three. All right, well, we are just about at the end of this episode. Hybrid culture is formed, but frickin' Scottish culture still doesn't exist. Should exist in maybe about another 30 years, but right now, it doesn't. We could do it manually, but I want to see what happens to make it pop not manually. What in the world has happened to my ward, to my ward at Bangar? He is all bruised and beaten, and he refuses to name who did this to him. Was it an older child, or did he pester a noble to the point of fury? Now he's all but stopped talking and constantly hides away when there are people nearby. Poor boy. Poor boy. So he's become shy. We can let him have Paranoid. We can let him have Craven. So we could have him be a coward. We could have him be Paranoid. Or we could just have him be shy. His personal scheme power would be reduced. Let's just do that. I don't want to stress out the king anymore. Shy is fine. We'll stick with that. Anyway, on that note, let's pause for a moment. I'll stop this episode here. In the next one, we are going to continue to try and gain as much gold as we can, while also gaining as much opinion as we can from these other rulers, because I don't have to actually fight anymore for these... I can't declare war, war well in debt. Yes, I know this. But I can't fight, I don't have to fight over them if I don't, you know, if I have other options. What's the main other option would be vassalizing them and just saying, hey, I'm your emperor. You should, you know, serve me and, and, and not fight me. 
and hopefully that conversation would go well. But that's a conversation that we'll have to wait for the next episode or two or three. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along for channel emotes and member badges. Look for the join button to learn more. New episodes drop every day but Tuesday at 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, and comments are always welcome, so leave your thoughts below, and I'll see you next time.